Welcome back to 80s Comics, where I'm about to take a deep dive into 80s toys turned into cartoons and comic books with Silverhawks, issue number one from 1987. And I want you to check this out. Let's look down here in the corner. See that? 1987 is the year of the reader. The year of the reader. What's 2020? The year of absolute, complete, unimaginable suck in every possible way. Take a trip with me back to 1987 as we enjoy Silverhawks in the year of the reader. You know what they say if the comic book has laser keytars that fire music beams in space. It's got to be good. And it is. It's not as good as Visionaries, but... Silverhawks issue number one from August of 1987. What an incredible cover design. That's a great cover that totally makes me want to read this. And read it, I just did. Silverhawks number one. Just pick this one up. It's not a comic book that I had back in the day. But I remember the TV show. And I remember liking the TV show. But I don't remember much about the TV show. 1987 is near the end of the toys turned cartoons turned comic books era and and by by 1987 like i was all in on galaxy rangers and robotech and if i wasn't watching galaxy rangers and robotech then i was going gi joe or transformers and in 1987 there was no netflix or youtube so they often conflicted with each other i don't recall seeing all that many silverhawks but i thought the designs looked really cool and the comic book captures that well here. I'm not, I'm not familiar with the characters, or at least I wasn't until I just read this. So it's like we're going to enjoy Silverhawks together for the first time. Again, for the second time, but really for the first time, because I don't remember it all that well. So it's the origin story of Silverhawks. Here's the creative team. Totally different team than what you'd find on uh, Sectars and Visionaries. Silverhawks ran for seven issues, by the way. I, I, I misspoke talking about Sectars. I confused them with Silverhawks. Sectars ran for eight issues. Visionaries, six. Silverhawks, seven. Sadly, none of them all that long. But Cowboy in a robot bodysuit with an electric guitar flying a spaceship surrounded by a bunch of space people with wings and hawks. Yes, I'm sold. And so are you. They fly on silver wings. They fight with nerves of steel, partly metal, partly real. They are the Silverhawks. Star Comics from, from Marvel. They also published uh, Thundercats and then the, the horrific Ewoks, but uh, they did some good stuff too. So, first issue here we meet. We get a whole lot of terms, a whole lot of characters. They set the stage and, and just introduce the entire concept. Uh... Hawkhaven and Limbo Galaxy. Everything's got to be named. It's the 80s. Everything's got to have like cool names based on whatever like the premise is. So everything's got to have like a bird theme here. Sectar is everything an insect theme. Silverhawks, everything's got a bird theme. Hawkhaven, Limbo Galaxy, high above planet Bedlama. It's got Commander Stargazer. Okay, something's going on. Monstar is free! Monstar. Who is Monstar? So this is like the Silverhawks answer to Mumra. Monstar. So there's going to be a some kind of a moon a moon starburst. That's right. So Monstar is imprisoned. Obviously, he looks like a bad guy. He's a bad guy. It's the 80s. Look, that's what bad guys look like in the 80s. There's going to be a moon starburst, and it's going to give Monstar superpowers. So they they close they uh, cover up the the, uh, pri the space prison, but they don't do a very good job. So obviously Monstar breaks free, and it is, this this is literally like Mumra. <laughs> and then he turns into the you know, like more, a more powerful version of, of Monstar. Give me the might, the muscle, the menace of Monstar! Gotta have a catchphrase. And I was, I'm totally sold on the transforming space squid named Skyrunner. <laughs> you won me over with the transforming space squid, Silverhawks. This is great. Monstar's pet friend, whatever, spaceship, Uber. He he summons this thing. It's a space squid that then transforms into a spaceship, which no doubt you could run out to Toys R Us and buy the spaceship. And you can have that thing fight an ad at. It would no doubt lose. And here we meet the bad guys. Gotta have a team of bad guys. Any 80s comic book with a girl playing a guitar that shoots lasers is a must-own. 
Okay, let's just be clear about that here. This is a law. What's her name? It's not, it's not molecular. This is Mel oh, Melodia, obviously, because she plays the guitar. She's the uh, missing member of Gem and the Holograms. She was kicked out for doing too much coke. Now that we've all been introduced to the bad guys, we're going to meet the good guys here in the laboratory using these Molecu docks, a giant row of uh, 1980s mainframes in space or whatever. And here's the Commander Quicksilver. Commander Quicksilver. And this guy, I remember him from the cartoon, Copper Kid. Like, I, I can, like, recite Galaxy Rangers backwards and forwards, but I just don't remember the Silverhawks all that well. Of course, Galaxy Rangers is hard to beat. That show's awesome. But this book's not too bad. I don't recall there be, I don't think there is a Galaxy Rangers comic book. I'm not sure. I haven't seen one yet. In any event, let's keep going here. We've got this dude, T. Boone Pickens, who's a bluegrass or whatever. He's the pilot, so it basically, it's like Wild, uh, Wild Bill from G.I. Joe. Here's Emily Hart, designer, technician, and strong as all get out. And her twin brother, they're uh, Steelheart, Steel Will. Speaking of Galaxy Rangers, here we have an ad for the Galaxy Rangers. $14.95 on cassette. Worth every penny. I like these ship designs in, uh, in Silverhawks. Uh, let's take, talk about the artwork quickly here. It's pretty good. Who's the artist in this one? Mike Witherby does the pencils. Jim Sanders, the third, of, does the inking. Jack Morelli, letters, familiar, uh, familiar name. The artwork's good. It's not quite as technical as... Uh, what I would call some of the competing books from the era, like Visionaries and Sectars. Uh, but it's still it's still fun. Reads well. It's a lighter book. This one's a lot like Thundercats. I wonder if that was what they were what they were going for with this series. Uh, Thundercats has more likable characters, I think. But that being said, I'm also only on issue one of of the Silverhawks, where they give us a like a training routine. We get to see what the their spaceship can do. Let's jump ahead here. I do like any. Any 80s series where they start rocking out with electric guitars and like music and lasers start to flow from the instruments. Like, scree! In addition to a sound effect, we also meet another member of the Silverhawks, Tallyhawk. Who at first glance is way cooler than Orko and Snarf. So, that's a good thing. Then we get a great space battle. A lot of fun where they show us all of the Silverhawks' different attacks. And I like when they fight with the musical instruments. That's my favorite. When they start shooting the... Uh, I start using the electric guitar versus the keytar in space. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. So the lady wants to jam, huh? Silverhawks is colorful. It's fun. It's definitely aimed at a younger audience, but you can't go wrong with electric guitars and keytars that fire lasers in space. It's a fun read. Look at Bluegrass. He's rocking out in the cockpit in space with lasers. <laughs> it's Silverhawks, issue one, recommended by 80scomics.com. This issue does leave one question unanswered. What is bluegrass playing? Like, I kind of want to go Hot Dog from Led Zeppelin, but this is 1987. I think he's rocking Whitesnake. Which means that we need Tawny Katane rolling around in the hood of that thing.